Okay, so in this video, we will determine whether this series converges or diverges using the integral test. To get a feeling for what kind of terms we're summing, we can always write out the first few terms of the series. So we begin here with summing when n is 2, so we have 1 over 2, the root of ln of 2. plus when n is 3, 1 over 3, square root of ln of 3. Let's do one more, plus 1 over when n is 4, root of ln of 4, and so forth. So we're trying to add this infinite list of real numbers, and we're asking, will this return a real number or simply diverge? And as we're adding up positive numbers, the sum gets bigger and bigger and bigger after we have added each term. So there are only two possibilities here. Either the sum is finite, and so the series converges, or the sum will blow up to positive infinity. Well, here's the nth term of our series. A n is 1 over n root of ln of n. And in the integral test we need f of n equals a n. So, f of n equals a n, so it just has to be 1 over n, root of ln of n. And then of course you can clearly see what f of x is, replacing n by x. So f of x is 1 over the root, or 1 over x times the root of ln of x. This is our function. Before we can apply the integral test, though, we have to make sure that f satisfies the two conditions, that it is eventually non-negative and eventually decreasing. But both here are trivial. Right? We're summing from 2 to infinity, so you can look at the real line. When x is above 2, when x is positive, x is positive, ln of 2 and above is positive, so the root of something positive is positive, so then f is 1 over something that is always positive from 2 and beyond, so clearly f of x is non negative. From 2 to infinity. First condition is trivially satisfied. Second condition, f of x must be eventually decreasing. Well, in general, to prove that a function is decreasing, you can simply take its derivative and show that the derivative at some point becomes negative, which proves that you have an eventually decreasing function. So here you could find the derivative of f, but we can do even simpler. Ignore the numerator, and look at the denominator. x is an increasing function, so is the root of ln of x. So we have 1 over an increasing function. The result is clearly a decreasing function. So here, because and only because we have 1 over what we know to be an increasing function, we know the result is decreasing. 1 over something that gets bigger and bigger and bigger must be getting smaller and smaller and smaller, therefore it's decreasing. So we do not need here to take the derivative. But make no mistake, sometimes the function may not be clearly decreasing, and then you will have to take the derivative. But here, not the case, so clearly f of x is not negative and decreasing. And now we can apply the integral test which says that you can compare the infinite series to the improper integral. So here we will ignore this and look at the integral from 2 to infinity of f of x dx. This is the integral from 2 to infinity. f of x is 1 over x root of ln of x dx. Now, 
we simply have to try and figure out whether this improper integral converges or diverges. Well, let's first find our antiderivative, and then we'll see what happens. So we're trying to integrate 1 over x the root of 1 of x dx. And if you look at this integral, it's actually a very simple integral. The derivative of ln of x is 1 over x, so this is a straightforward u substitution. The differential of u du is the differential of ln of x, which is 1 over x dx. And so you see the integral becomes, well, 1 over the root of ln of x, that's the root of u, so 1 over root of u, and the leftover 1 over x times dx is simply du. And we can now use the power rule. 1 over root of u is equal to the negative 1 half. Power rule, add 1 to the exponent, get equal to the 1 half, divide by 1 half, plus c, and I replace back in terms of x. 1 over 1 half is 2. The power of 1 half is the square root, so that's the square root of ln of x. Plus, of course, c. Now that we have our antiderivative, we can go back to the improper integral. So the integral from 2 to infinity of f of x is, well, now that we have our antiderivative, <coughs> we can evaluate this, <coughs> sorry, we can evaluate this from 2 to t, And then, of course, we have to let t approach positive infinity. Let's see what happens. So we have 2 root of ln of t minus 2 root of ln of 2. But, as t goes to infinity, ln of t goes to infinity, the root of infinity is infinity, so this term blows up to positive infinity, minus a real number, doesn't matter, the whole thing blows up to positive infinity. And now we can quote the conclusion from the integral test. And again, the intuition is that this represents the exact area below the function from 2 to infinity, if you recall the intuition, this represents the total area of the given rectangles. So the infinite series is roughly the size of the improper integral. And this improper integral is infinite. The exact area below f of x from 2 to infinity is infinite. So if the series is roughly the size in terms of magnitude of the improper integral, which is infinite, the series has no choice but is also infinite. So the series blows up as well. Therefore, if the series blows up, it diverges. And so you can appreciate again that the integral test is very intuitive. As long as the terms that you're summing give you a function that is eventually non-negative and decreasing, 
the size of the series is roughly the size of the improper integral. As the integral is infinite, so must be the series. Therefore, it diverges by flowing up. So if you go back to your expanded sum, so if you try to sum these terms, as you keep adding more and more of these terms, the result will get bigger and bigger and bigger and grow out of bounds. So in the limit, the series blows up. Therefore, diverges by the integral test. And this should have been my conclusion here. Hence, diverges by... And here, every time you want to see the integral test, you simply have to write it by the integral test. And again, always remember that when you claim a series converges or diverges, you have to justify in the end saying by which test you arrived at the given conclusion. And that's it.